in most uh, interviews or descriptions of you, I've heard it said that you don't, uh, you're an introvert, yeah. okay? You're not somebody who, you know, goes out and sells yourself, you know, you, you'd, you'd rather not do that. That's not normally the traits that go with uh, somebody in your position. Yeah. Has it been something that is, again, conscious? Is this that the way you are? Has that hurt you? Has that helped you? How would you see it? Uh, so, yes, uh, I think I would lean on the side of being an introvert. At least all the psychoprofiling that's been done on me suggests that too. Mm -hmm. And um, I draw my energy from you know, working on the road rather than going out there. And I hate having to stand and talk in front of a group of more than 50. So Are you serious? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that is true. Huh? But uh, at the same time, I draw energy from people. Mm. Uh, as I told you earlier, you know, when, when I'm doing a vision document or even trying to solve a problem, I love to sit with a bunch of people and try and solve it rather than do it alone. So to that extent, I'm not the typical introvert because an introvert draws energy internally. I draw energy by being with people, but I don't like to go out there and address large groups of people or, or be the typical mm -hmm. extrovert. And uh, I think it's worked well for me because I develop relationships more on a one-to-one -one basis rather than... Mm -hmm. You were telling so me sure earlier that in a sense this might have allowed you to take more risks because yeah. you're not really looking behind your shoulder to see what people are saying about you. So yeah, when you were talking earlier and you were wondering whether uh, an introvert would find it difficult to take risk, I was actually saying that, you know, in a sense an introvert who uh, or somebody like me who uh, is more concerned about what I think about myself rather than what the whole world thinks about me. Not to say that I don't care, of course all of us care, but it's just on the balance, I think what I think about myself is more important to me. Then my ability to take risk, I think, is higher because I have to basically prove only to myself and I am willing to say that, look, if three times out of five I succeeded and if one time I was okay and one time I failed, that's okay. I mean, I'm not going to succeed every time. There will be some things that will go wrong and that doesn't change the strength of who I am or my core capability. So that's allowed me to take risk. My dad was in the army and he's fought a couple of wars on the border mm. actively. So uh, risk is something that we've grown up with. Uh, change is something we've grown up with because we change schools every two, three years. We moved cities. So uh, change and risk is something very ingrained. Mm. It's more internal than... In, yeah. you know, the reason I'm asking you this question, Shikha, is because one believes, and that's the, the stereotype of yeah. a very successful yeah. women is, woman, is that a woman has to fight harder, mm. be more aggressive, be more on your face mm. to succeed in a man's world. Mm. Uh, you don't think so? Um, I think that can be counterproductive because, yeah. uh, yes, that has been the stereotype, but I haven't come, you know, if I look around and see the women who have been successful in India, I don't think they necessarily fit that stereotype. Mm -hmm. you, you find a lot of quieter, softer women leading uh, institutions, um, at least in India. So, uh, so I don't see, as I said, that stereotype. And if you're over aggressive, maybe you, you put off a lot of people and that may not really be the smartest thing to do. So I'm not sure that stereotype really works on the ground. Last set of questions. What should organizations do to keep women engaged? First of all, I think it's very important for organizations to treat men and women as equal. Because if you create quotas for women, it actually, I think, works against women. So uh, I have never been a believer in creating quotas for women. Uh, what women do need is a bit more flexibility, especially during the years of childbearing and, you know, uh, child rearing. And to the extent that organizations can provide that flexibility, either by allowing a bit more work from home or letting them take short breaks and come back, uh, that I'm sure is useful. Uh, lots of people have experimented with creches. I don't know whether it's really made a big difference. At least personally, I have not found the value of it. What about women? Do, th do you think they push enough? Do they demand enough? You know? Yeah, I find that, you know, uh, a little bit of an issue, not just with women, but sometimes with the whole generation. 
that maybe they've had things too easy and they want to run away at the first obstacle. But uh, I keep telling my kids that, that life's not going to be smooth sailing. You are going to hit patches. You will hit patches of boredom. You will hit patches of frustration. You will hit patches where you feel maybe your organization is not being fair to you, your boss is not being fair to you. I think you have the abil- you have to have the ability to stay the course. Mm-hmm. Now, stay the course doesn't mean that you become a doormat. No, you have to keep up the internal energy and keep doing the right things. But uh, you have to have the ability to stay the course and keep learning in the environment and finding challenge because you're not going to find that perfect day every day. And, uh, and you have to keep pushing in a soft kind of way to make sure you're learning, uh, you're getting challenged and evaluate, I think, in one year or 18 month buckets. Don't evaluate daily, don't evaluate every quarter mm-hmm. what's happening to your career. But ultimately, the question I've always asked myself is over the 18 month, two year period, do I feel like I've had enough challenge on the role? Have I grown personally by learning some new skills or capabilities? And do I think I make a difference to the organization? Because if you don't make a difference, ultimately you will lose value. And broadly, you know, am I being recognized for what I'm doing? I think if the answers to those questions are right, you should hang in there and make the effort. Don't run away too soon. Last question. What would your advice be to anybody watching this show, a, a woman watching this show who, who aspires to be you and in your position and also wants a, a well-balanced life? Uh, what would your advice be? So I think the first thing is, I think balance is important because sometimes we get confused by the priorities. But when you look at a long life, then I think uh, if uh, I was successful at work but had a completely messed up family situation, I don't think I'd be a happy person. I think these two lives feed off each other and it's important to get balance between the two. But you don't balance day by day, you balance over a lifespan. Uh, Secondly, uh, I think, you know, as women who do so well in schools and academic institutions, we all know that we are as capable and we should remember that every day. And we don't have to be terribly aggressive about it. I think internal confidence is a lot more important than um, the external aggression. For me personally, that's worked very well. So that's what I would advise. Uh, that have faith in yourself and have that quiet confidence. You don't have to throw it around. And uh, stay passionate, stay committed. Uh, there's no substitute for determination and hard work. Thank you so much, Shikha. You're welcome.